Hello again lovely people and welcome to Wow Crochet. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful little beanie. It is a premi beanie and it was requested to me um, by a friend on Facebook. She is wanting to make beanies for her um, the hospital in her area. Now uh, just a quick one to her while we are here. Uh, check with the hospital first if they want you to use 100% pure wool or if they want you to use acrylic or cotton or whatever they want you to use because there's nothing worse than you going away and doing a hundred of them and then donating them to the hospital and they say oh, I'm sorry we don't use that thread it's not good for baby's head so do check with that hospital first I have used 100% pure Australian wool here it is the Klaket yarn which is this one here we'll be using this color today and um, yeah it was very basic but you know it's a little bit fiddly around here but that's okay because it's not a bad fiddly well it didn't, wasn't too difficult so if you are new to crochet take your time you can actually do this if you are an intermediate you won't have any problems and if you are an expert you're going to fly through this okay today we are using click Eaton country eight ply australian wool okay it calls for a size uh, four millimeter hook Ta -ta. and my favorite clover hook there uh, we need a pair of scissors and we also need a little darning needle which we don't like to do very often yours truly can spend hours and hours making a product and then have it sit there just so I, I have to sew in the ends and I just can't be bothered and it can sit there for weeks <laughs> before I even consider sewing in ends so let's get started a little trivia about me there <laughs> now if you uh, are not familiar with chains uh, magic loop or magic ring, um, slip knot, no not slip knot, um, slip stitch, sorry, double crochet and half double crochet and back loops and front loops, then you may need to have a little bit of practice. I do have tutorials here on my uh, YouTube channel. You can go and have a practice and come back to us. Um, you don't need to. We can probably just do the tutorial nice and slowly for you, which I usually do anyway. Um, so you may as well stick around and get started. Okay, so here we have our tail end we're going to use three fingers so the thread goes over our fingers and across okay so you've just made like a you just made a cross there so we're going to blow that up for you so you can have a look then you get your hook you pop it under the back of that loop just underneath it then you pull up a loop and you turn now just be weary don't let go of your end you need to grab that end but don't let go of it because it can flick undone this little loop can flick undone so hang on to it while you're doing it just a little bit fiddly to begin with but it does make a neater circle now I've only been doing this magic loop now for six months I've been crocheting for 100 years yeah well maybe not 100 but close to it and um, and I've only been doing this magic loop for six months and I'm absolutely addicted to it now so we're going to chain one and two and three still holding on to that see that ring right there if you let go of that too quickly you will lose that stitch okay if you're not sure how to do that just pause the video and have another practice otherwise let's keep going the chain three here will classify as a first double crochet but only in this row okay so now we're going to do 11 double crochets there's your first one one see how it's a bit already starting to loosen a bit there okay that's one we're going to do another 10 because <laughs> that's one um, in the circle if you find a circle is too big and too fiddly just close it a little bit not much because you need to fit 12 double crochets all together in there so you've got the one chain one double crochet and now we'll do another 10 which will make 12 how about that I can count <laughs> who knew <laughs> sorry about that sometimes I get a little distracted all right so there's the third double crochet and now we're into our fourth double crochet and our fifth double crochet and so on and so forth so keep going and count 12 and we're up to six seven or was it seven doesn't matter if we do too many we can always take one undone oops that's a half double by the way people <laughs> okay another double crochet 
and guess what I've lost track so what we're gonna do we're gonna stop in a minute not yet keep going and we are gonna count yours truly needs to stop talking so I can remember what I'm doing here <laughs> let's stop for a moment okay I don't think we've done 12 but we'll stop anyway so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so I actually need to do two more because that chain counts as one remember oh, I don't know where you're up to but I need to do two more one two now the reason this is called a magic ring or a magic loop is because when you pull it that thread there it looks like magic when it closes it up completely okay so you now officially have a circle now usually when you do beanies there's a bit of a hole there and you kind of have to weave in that end real tight at the end to close that hole up but when you do your magic ring you don't need to do that okay so let's now we need to slip knot slip knot slip stitch I keep calling it a slip knot into that third chain now this is classified as a double crochet so you don't want to slip in there you've got to go right in that chain let's see if I can get a nice close-up so you can see that probably should have used a thicker yarn to show you this pattern see that chain right there that's where we want to be whoops right there all right you got that grab your loop pull it through and pull it through to that last stitch or stitch on your hook there so now what you have is you should have 12 in the round okay so chain up one and two only for this row okay this is now no longer going to be classified as a double crochet i use this these two chains here as a way of closing up your ends in most of the, the beanies you see they have i'll blow this up they have like a line that goes all the way down there sort of sits to the side a bit and you could probably just faintly see that line there because we do those two chains and lock it up, you don't see it. So the baby can wear this beanie any way they want and nobody will know where it stopped and started or started and stopped, whichever you, you want to use. Okay, pretty tricky, huh? Okay, something I learned over the past few years of messing up. <laughs> All right, so now we've got your two chains. We're not going to worry about that anymore. We're going to put a, a normal double crochet in there. In the same stitch as your chain stitch which is there now because we're not classifying those two chains as a double crochet you're going to need to put another double crochet in there but we're not going to do that until the end of the row and I will show you why when we get to the end of the row each stitch will now have two double crochets in it so that's classified as one at the moment but we're going to finish that off later and then right there we put two double crochets in there now yours may not be very visible if you've made it tightly like I have a tight stitch but if it's nice and loose you'll be able to see that okay so there's two double crochets in there and two double crochets in there all right easy so far two double crochets in there it's too easy what I want you to do is continue doing that until you get to the end and I will meet you up all right here we are at the end okay we've got two double crochets in our last stitch there if you haven't got them in pop them in now okay then we are going to slip stitch now because we we said no we're not going to slip stitch first sorry we've done our two double crochets remember at the beginning when I said there's only one double crochet in here and we need to add another one we're going to do that now it's going to look a little weird just when you're while you're doing it but afterwards it'll look perfect okay all right so it's your normal double crochet and where it's going to go is right in that slip stitch that you did in the very beginning or the end of the last row I should say now it looks like we're doing it kind of on the side which we almost are whoops there was our double crochet it's kind of on the side isn't it but then you slip stitch into that very first double crochet okay like that 
So whilst you're slip stitching in, what it's done is it's closed the gap up. So you don't see that weird line that'll go all the way. Ugh, it's no good having a big hand there. The weird line that'll go all the way down that way. You won't see it, okay? What you do see is a beautiful, neatly finished round, okay? So that's that. Now we are going to do exactly the same. A little bit different, but the same chaining up. So chain one, two, okay? So now what we're going to do is pop another double crochet in that same stitch, like we did before, okay? Again, those chain twos count as nothing, so don't worry about them. Now with this row, we're going to keep increasing in the next, I don't know, three or four rounds. I'll tell you when we get up to the end there. <laughs> so let's increase in this round by one. Before we were increasing by two, now we're going to be increasing by one. This area here will be two double crochets in the end, when I put another one in at the end. Now we're going to go one double crochet in the next. Okay. And then see how we've got two double crochets underneath. Oh, no, that doesn't matter on this round. doesn't matter. So I'll put two double crochets in there. That's for the next round. Sorry, people. I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'll put two in there. Getting ahead of myself. Okay. We're going to put one in the next. Two in there. I also forgot to mention that your previous round that we just did should have had at the end of that row 24 stitches because we doubled our row. That was one and then we have two in there. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll just show you quickly. There's your first row which was your 12 stitches and this one here should be 24. This round that we're doing now at the end of the row because we're only doing every second one, increasing every second one, it should be uh, 36. Okay, so one, two in there, and then one in there and then two in the next all right so it's pretty basic so what I want you to do is continue in that manner until you get to the end when you get to the end you should have um, this very last stitch there should be one so get to the end and I'll meet you up all right here we are on the end of our third round so we had 12 in there, 24 in there. We should have 36. Don't panic if you've counted 35 because we still have to do that very last double crochet. Okay, so you've done your double crochet in there. We have to do that double crochet back in that slip stitch like we did in the previous round that helps us keep our rounds neat. Okay, so we're going to do that now. A little bit tricky again. It's a very tricky stitch in the area there, but you, you will get it, all right? So there's your chain stitch right there, really tight now because you've gone into your next round, you're going to put a double crochet in there. Okay, whoops, a little bit tricky but it's there. Alright, see how it looks like it's crisscrossed? When you slip stitch into your very first double crochet that you did right there, it closes up shop, doesn't it? And you don't see the crisscross. Whoops, there you go. So you start to see a very faint line. In the previous beanies that I've done in the past, the line was really crooked and it was open. It was like very gappy, whereas now you don't see that. Okay, it's beautiful. I like it. Okay, so now that you are up to your one, two, three, fourth round, you should have 36 stitches. Go ahead and count them and then we'll continue. Okay, so let's get started one whoops one and two so we're chaining up two in every round from now on we chained up three the first round but each round after that will be two so we're going to put a double crochet in that same stitch as our chains so it's exactly pretty much exactly the same as we did before now this is where that trick i was trying to talk to you about before comes in handy okay but let's just start working at the end of the row, we'll have to put another double crochet in there, okay? And that'll classify as two. So if there's going to be two there, your next two stitches have to be one double crochet each. So you go one in the next, and 
one in the next. All right, now here's where that little trick comes in handy. We've done one and two, we've got to put two in there. At the end of each row, your stitches below, there will be two there. This one will be one, there'll be one there. So in between those two stitches, you'll always have two until you get to the end of the increasing rounds. I'll explain that to you again in a minute. All right, so now we're just going to put two double crochets in there. You'll know what I mean when I finish the next two sets. All right, that's two in there. And now one in each of the next two stitches. So one in there and one in there and then two in there two in the next right that's the way the pattern's going to work um, at, until the end of this row right I'm going to show you in a minute what I meant okay done now you've got your two double crochets in that two double crochet from below then you've got one and one and then your two double crochets in that two double crochet set below that's that's just a little trick that I've learned recently every second group every group of double crochet like that you will be putting two in there that's how you remember it okay now if you've messed up that previous round that trick's gonna get messed up it'll mess you up again <laughs> so just gonna make sure you've done the previous round correct okay so what I want you to do continue in that manner doing one double crochet in each two spaces like one double crochet one double crochet and then two double crochet one double crochet one double crochet and then two double crochet do that all the way in the round and I shall meet you up all right we are officially at the end of the fourth round and I'm really excited because this is the end of the increasing round okay pretty cool huh all right so remember we we're doing two double crochet we we're doing one one and then two I haven't finished off my last two. So I do one in there. And one in there. Whoops, in there. <laughs> Looking through the camera lens again. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting to pull on our thread here a bit. Sorry about that. Now, again, we are going to slip stitch in that, the top of that double crochet right there, okay? So slip stitch, no we're not, I tell a lie, I tell a lie. We forgot to put that double crochet in there. This is a little trick that if you forget to put that double crochet in there, you're going to be one double crochet short. Okay, so put a double crochet in the very first slip stitch, which is quite tight there, my tight stitching. Um, in that very first one right there. Again, it looks a bit, a bit weird and on an angle, but once you slip stitch it, it closes it all up so slip stitch in that first double crochet there and see how it's closed it all up and if you have a good look at that seam line oh, it's too far away now it's very faint okay in the old days gaps 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 all the way through so it's pretty good I'm very pleased with this stitch okay now best part you are up to the best part row five row five is chain one and two now the only thing different about the next five rows okay is that remember when we were doing our chain two and we were putting a double crochet in the same stitch we're not going to do that now we're just going to go into that very next stitch because on the way back we are going to put the normal double crochet in there okay that's the only time this pattern changes a bit so we're not going to go in the same stitch we're going to do a normal double crochet in that very next stitch okay and now that we're not increasing anymore the best part this is what I call the best part all we need to do is put a double crochet in each stitch in the round pretty cool huh okay so for the next five rows this is what you are going to be doing okay next five rows this row and the next four rows my apologies so the fifth row and then say five six seven eight nine ten okay <laughs> you'll be doing this okay I'm frustrating myself here <laughs> all right okay so continue in this manner get to the end of the row and I shall meet you up okay so here we are on our last stitch I didn't finish the row 
I didn't finish the row because I wanted to show you that uh, end of row stitch, which is a little bit, it's the same, but it's a little bit different, okay? So we are going to put our normal double crochet in the last stitch, okay? Now, remember how the beginning we were putting a double crochet in there? We're still going to do that, okay? But remember how we skipped it and went into that next one? So now that we go back into it, all it's doing is helping us close up that gap so we don't see the gap anymore. So slip stitch into that next stitch now. So we're actually moving to the next one. All right. So there's your line, your very faint line that you can't see. You chain up two. And remember, we're not doing it in the same one in this round or the next four rounds. Okay. I'm just going to show you what's happening to your beanie now. Because you're finished increasing, it's going to start to curve like that. It will curve. Okay, that's now forming, that's your crown, and it's now forming the actual sides of the beanie. Okay, for the next four rows, I want you to continue doing exactly what we did in this row. And remembering to chain up the two, which we just did. Chain up the two, skipping that chain spot this time. Instead of putting it in there, skip it and just go into your next double crochet. Okay, and double crochet in each stitch all the way to the end. And then you put your double crochet in there at the end and slip stitch into that one. Okay, exactly what we did in row five. Continue in that manner until you get to row 10 and get ready for the final row. Four more rows you have to do, until then, I'll catch you up. Congratulations, you made it to the end of row 10. You should have, at the end of row 10, 48 double crochets, but don't count them yet. We'll just finish off that last stitch. Let's just bring that up a little bit. Okay, you should be able to put a double crochet in that same space as your chains right there like that i know it looks weird but only for now until we close it up and then slip stitch into the top of that double crochet right there so now what i want you to do is count all your stitches that's classified as one so you go one two all the way around and you should have 48. okay i'll wait up for you count your stitches All right. Okay, so here we are at the end of our beanie. We have one final row to go, which makes it look as cute as this little row right here. It looks like um, a ribbing effect. It gives it a bit of a ribbing effect. And it makes your Premier Baby look cute as well as feel warm and comfortable. They need to be very warm preemie babies um, so they need to have their heads covered during their time or their stay at the hospital now let's get started on that very next row okay this row completely different than what we've been doing okay we are going to be doing what we call the half double crochet in the front post in one stitch and then half double crochet in the back post, in the next stitch. And then front, and then back, and then front, and then back all the way across. But if you are new to, to back post and front post, th this is going to be a little tricky for you. Okay? So take your time, and we're going to do it together. Okay? So we're going to chain up two like we've been doing for the past ten rounds. Then we are going to put our yarn over hook to do our front post. Now we're not going to work here, we're just going to work into that very next stitch. Because see this chain space here? Later we're going to use that to finish off our row. So for now we're going to put a front post in that first stitch. So there's your stitch. You pop your hook behind the stitch, behind the post, not even a stitch, behind the post. That's called a post right there. So behind the post to the front and that's your front and your yarn through all three stitches okay that's your front half post double crochet 
back half double crochet into the next stitch so you go to the front then to the back this is a bit awkward pull up a loop through there it's a little bit awkward but it's practice pull up a loop and pull it through all three stitches on your hook okay pretty cool huh so we're going to do the front one again so yarn over hook pop it through the back to the front yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through all three loops on your hook now we're going to do the back one so yarn over hook pop it through the back to the or the front to the back yarn over hook pull up a loop there it is yarn of hook pull through all three loops on your hook it will be fiddly but it you know it's all about practice so continue doing that the next one will be front back front back front back and so on until you get to the end okay and I will meet you up all right where you should be when you get to the end of this row you should have oh, let me get a nice close-up there you should have that last second last one is a front and then your last one will be the back okay like so and then you are going to do that very first post see that post right there we're going to do a front one on that even though we've already got a front one there we're going to do a front one right there and slip stitch into that space right there Closing it up, and guess what? Pull up a loop, you're officially done. Okay? Beautiful. Now don't panic if you um, if you didn't end up on the same stitch count as I did. It doesn't matter because a preemie baby, they're all different sizes anyway. If you're a little bit um, less stitches here or a little bit more it doesn't matter if it's only one stitch more don't worry about it okay because or one stitch less because baby I don't think baby will notice okay <laughs> all right so there you go that's what we've got so far now what we're going to do is weave in those pesky ends as much as we hate doing them so you notice how that that the um the uh, magic ring has closed up that little circle there it's a little bit open now because it's gone a bit loose so we're going to tighten it up and then weave it in so give it a bit of a tug and then we're going to weave that end in all right so i hope that your journey through crochet is just as much fun as mine i'm not sure if i mentioned that earlier in the tutorial there but um i have enjoyed every minute of crocheting and no i'm not finishing up people i'm just <laughs> it sounds like I'm leaving, aren't I? Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, both my Etsy and my madeit.com.au stores are up and running. So um, don't forget when you're weaving in the end, just keep going into the round. Just keep going into the round like that. Um, the stores are up and running. If you want to go and purchase anything, I'm actually even contemplating um, popping this pattern um, on the store as well okay so um just keep going into the round when you've gone through enough turn around and just go through one or two the other way you know don't fuss too much just as long as you have closed it up and you know it's not going to come undone okay it's not like baby's going to be doing aerobics or anything so you know it's not doing backflips it's too busy sleeping and trying to get better and trying to grow into um, the baby that he or she is. Okay, that's that one done. So we're back to the right side again. And we still have this pesky tail right here, which we are going to weave in as well. So we thread our needle. I'm using the wrong needle here, people. It's really, really thin for this particular yarn and it's splitting it on me. I may have to get another one. We'll see. I could probably get away with it. Ah, not really. It's splitting all over the place. So to the lovely lady on Facebook who inquired about this pattern, I thank you for inquiring because now I've had an opportunity to do another tutorial 
that will um, help out any mums who have had creamy babies okay so we're ready to weave in this end now here's a little trick that yours truly has on uh, I think a previous tutorial as well the the yarn is facing this way when you slip stitched in there it faces this way and we get a nice close-up for you oh that wasn't very good was it <laughs> close up on my finger um, because it's facing this way we are going to so you can see it it's going to pop your needle and split it split the yarn and pop your needle down there and just pull it through and what will happen is that real thick lump right there will go in so it's gone you could still see it a little bit just give it a tug there you go it's gone so what we're going to do is weave in and out of the top of this particular area weave in and out as, as you wish any way you like this is my way of doing it doesn't mean it's a right way of doing it it just means it's another way of doing it and we all have our ways of weaving in our ends so what I'm going to do is just weave in the two ends there you can probably do it twice three times whichever you feel comfortable with bring that out again give it a tug now that's the back so when you look at it remember I was telling you about um, oh, now I've lost the back can you believe it <laughs> just did the end I've lost it um, and I was telling about the little line that it leaves running down the end there you can find that back now can you believe it that's good I've weaved it in so well I can't even find it oh gosh there it is what it should have is a normal beanie should have a running line like that and you can probably see it very faint so it's not that noticeable because we've put in those extra chains you can't see it okay pretty amazing huh so there you have it that is your premi beanie if you like this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell button so you can receive further tutorials i hope that um, this has been very helpful i hope that your premi baby beanie will suit a gorgeous little bub and protect their beautiful heads so thank you so much for watching and ciao for now